In the mid-20th century, Tony Hancock, with his distinctive humor and defining role in the BBC series Hancock's Half Hour, became a prominent figure in British comedy. But a single critical mistake turned out to be more than a minor mishap. It signaled the beginning of the end of his career and eventually his life. From family tragedy to household name. Born in Hall Green, Birmingham on the 12th of May, 1924, Tony Hancock's life was destined for greatness. When he was only three, his family moved to Bournemouth, where his father, John Hancock, a comedian and entertainer, ran the Railway Hotel. Sadly, after his father's sudden and tragic death in 1934, young Hancock, along with his brothers, was taken under the care of his mother and stepfather at a small hotel called Durlston Court. His early life was characterized by a mix of privilege, heartbreak, and challenge. He attended Durlston Court Preparatory School and Bradfield College, but left his formal education behind at age 15. A significant turn in his life came during the Second World War when he joined the RAF Regiment. Despite a failed audition for the Entertainment's National Service Association, ENSA, he found a niche for himself in the Ralph Reeder gang show touring production of Wings. After the war, his career began to flourish. Hancock carved out a name for himself as a resident comedian at the Windmill Theater a breeding ground for comedic talent. Favorable press reviews soon followed, praising his brilliant thumbnail impressions of a dud concert party. Various appearances in radio shows and summer presentations further marked his rise. Hancock's career took a significant leap in 1951 with his role in Educating Archie. His portrayal, coupled with a memorable catchphrase, Flippin' Kids, resonated with the audience, earning him national recognition. Regular appearances on BBC television's Kaleidoscope and and his own eponymous BBC radio show, Hancock's Half Hour, solidified his reputation. The peak years of Hancock's career coincided with the success of Hancock's Half Hour, both on radio and television. Working with Ray Galton and Alan Simpson, the show became a sensation in Britain, showcasing Hancock's comedic talent, depicting him as a struggling comedian or sometimes a successful actor or barrister. It was a stark deviation from the typical variety format and focused more on everyday life's situation. Comedy. Sidney James, who featured prominently in both radio and TV versions, played an essential role in the show's success. The interaction between James and Hancock, characterized by friendship, humor, and the occasional exploitation of Hancock's naivete, became a core element of the series. But Hancock's increasing anxiety about turning into a double act led him to end his association with James in 1961. Hancock's half hour made Tony Hancock a phenomenon. He became a symbol of British comedy, influencing the way families consumed entertainment. The character's everyday struggles, his aspirations, and his interaction with other characters became synonymous with comedic brilliance. Highlights include episodes like The Blood Donor, where his famous line, I don't mind giving a reasonable amount, but a pint that's nearly an armful, became etched in the memory of audiences. Hancock's growth as an actor was also significant. From relying on teleprompters to overcoming a car accident, his commitment to his craft was unwavering. He managed to navigate through the challenges, delivering memorable performances, including his role in The Radio Ham. But the pressure to maintain his star status, coupled with personal demons, started to weigh on Hancock. The very thing that propelled him to fame became a burden. Behind the laughter, behind the applause, lay inner struggles that slowly crept into his professional life. Inner Demons in the 50s and early 60s, Tony was a household name. His comic genius, aligned with brilliant scripts, made him, at least for a time, the BBC's most popular entertainer. But beyond the laughter, a real-life struggle was brewing. Sadly, the real-life Hancock couldn't handle the success he'd so desperately sought. He was a man shadowed by depression and haunted by an intense fear of failure. The more triumphant he became, the more afraid he was of losing it all. His inner demons began to manifest in a deadly relationship with alcohol. Slowly, the booze began to diminish his talent, feeding a growing paranoia that led to professional decisions that can only be described as disastrous. Dropping long-standing support star Sid James and sacking Galton and Simpson, he sought to write his material but soon found himself spiraling into chaos. A career in shambles. His decisions severely impacted his career. 
He was desperate to remain a star, but his choices led him further from the spotlight. Moving to ATV in 1962 and working with different writers, Hancock faced critical comparisons that didn't favor him. Around 1965, he made various television adverts and continued to make appearances on British television until 1967, but his battle with alcoholism began to hinder his performances. By then, the damage had been done, with two unsuccessful variety series marking his last work for British television. His attempts to star in a Disney film ended in failure, and a dire health warning signaled the end of his life as he knew it. In his personal life, he faced tumultuous relationships and marriages that were short-lived. A last chance gone awry. Australia was supposed to be a fresh start for Hancock, a new series to revive his career. Sadly, the endeavor was already looking shambolic as he continued drinking heavily. Frightened and in turmoil, he found himself at a rented flat in Sydney, a place that became the scene of his desolate end. His last chance to start again had been squandered, and top Aussie comedy writer Hugh Stuckey's reflection that he felt more like a minder than a writer underscores the dire state he was in. An inevitable end. Despite the care and concerns from friends and colleagues, the sad truth was it would have taken a small miracle to save Tony Hancock from his demons. He was a man burdened by fear and self-doubt, driven by obsessive personality traits that eventually led to his ultimate mental collapse. His tragic decline culminated in a moment that his one-time comedy partner, Sid James, regretfully missed. He saw a disheveled Hancock stumbling along the pavement, but was unable to reach him. That small moment might have changed everything, but it was not to be. In an era when conditions like bipolar disorder were not understood, Hancock was left to struggle with his mental health, leading eventually to his heartbreaking demise. He met his tragic end through an overdose in Sydney on June 25, 1968, at age 44. His body was discovered in his Bellevue Hill flat, accompanied by an empty vodka bottle and a collection of amylo barbitone tablets. Among his farewell notes, he expressed a sentiment of despair, writing, Things just seem to go too wrong too many times. Hancock's Legacy Tony Hancock's impact and legacy in the world of entertainment continues to be recognized and celebrated. In Birmingham's Old Square on Corporation Street, a sculpture by Bruce Williams was erected in his honor in 1996. Further tributes include a plaque on his birthplace in Hall Green and another on the wall of a Bournemouth hotel where he spent part of his early life. The Dead Comics Society placed a plaque at Ten Grey Close in London's Hampstead Gardens suburb where he resided in 1947 and 48. In South Kensington, London, an English heritage blue plaque commemorates his residence at 20 Queen's Gate Place from 1952 to 58. The final chapter of his life became the subject of a BBC One television film, Hancock, starring Alfred Molina. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Tony Hancock? Let us know in the comments section below.